Much of Nigeria's wealth comes from palm oil, soap to you and me. And now on the south coast, they found mineral oil, the biggest strike south of the Sahara, although tiny by Venezuelan standards. Nigeria's economic potential was underlined only last month when international magazines carried a full-page advertisement spotlighting the country's new £670 million development plan. The South may be progressive, but tradition is still strong. Men like the Oba, the King of Lagos, Adeli II, still have considerable influence, not only with their poorer subjects, but also with Nigeria's modern leaders. Your Highness, my brother chiefs, now on behalf of the traditional and title chiefs, we express a grateful thanks to His Highness for the advice they have given us in connection with the forthcoming Adamonisha play. We pledge our support and cooperation, and we give him assurance that we shall see that order and law is maintained throughout the performance. Thank you. Only 70 years ago, the kings of Nigeria had absolute power of life and death. This king ruled Benin, one of the oldest of African kingdoms, conquered by the British in 1897. The streets of his capital once ran with the blood of human sacrifice. These stony eyes used to gaze on courtyards paved with skulls. And yet this incredibly bloodthirsty dynasty coincided with one of the great flowerings of African art, the Benin bronzes. They are a high watermark. Much of what came later was inferior, a witchcraft culture, juju. Juju gave way to Christianity, but the old religion died hard. And today you can find curious jumbles of paganism and Christianity, mumbo jumbo religions. These are the beach prophets of Lagos, divided into two main sects, the cherubim and seraphim. They claim inspiration from the angels that make ringing prophecies. They live in lean-tos under palm trees. Crosses in the sand mark the site of their churches. Believers who come to consult them kneel down in the sand. The prophets are also faith healers. The setting 